Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. The it's the horse artillery, Busby. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the silliest military hats that's ever been. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We're sitting here with Sam Andrews of Andrews Custom Leather. We're actually... We're welcome to the den. Yes, this is your den. This is your collection behind us. I keep telling you guys about it, so now you get to... You know, get a nice look. Lola's going to do some pans around here. Tell us quickly about what we're seeing here in this room. These are the history of the British Empire. From the first brown best flintlock all the way across to the last SLR. So every major infantry rifle used throughout about 300 years of history. Awesome, awesome. So there you go. That's the first question in this uh, question and answer. We're going to do a question and answer video. We've got some nice swords Lola's pointing to for some reason. <laughs> uh, but So you collect swords also. Well, these are also the British issue swords once okay. they standardized in the late 1700s. Okay, so that's your jam, the, the, that's the British stuff. And then what's, is this a machine gun here? This is a dummy. This, okay. this sadly is deactivated, but mm -hmm. it's one of the Vickers water-cooled machine guns so famous from World War I. Oh, okay. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, some great guns here that we'll get into. Uh, talk. To, well, we'll we'll try to roll in some footage of that. We did do a look at a couple of sidearms in your collection, right. and that'll be out at some point here. So, there's a few questions that folks have out there in the frequently asked questions category. Absolutely. That. Well, there's some we're going to hold until the end because we really need like visual explainers. Right. Some of for them that. need more of a demonstration. Yes. So we'll get to those if you're patient and you look all through the video, or I'll just put in a thing there and you can jump forward and look at it <laughs> if you want. It's all good um, if you don't have any kind of patience. <laughs> um, so let's see. One of the other, one of the first things that comes up, I think, a lot for you guys is lights and lasers, right? So right. so many pistols now with rails on them have big flashlights and laser attachments. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything in the leather holsters for guns with lights on the bottom. Now, a red dot sight on the top of the slide, we can accommodate those. Mm -hmm. Or the little laser grip, where it's mm -hmm. a little bump on the top of the right side okay. grip. Not a problem. That's just a notch or something. Exactly. Like that. But, but the, yeah. the big lights, they change the shape of the entire weapon far too much. Yeah, and then there's several different oh, there's hundreds lights, of lights that you can get. <laughs> there's so and... many designs of lights. Yeah, so there you go. For anyone who's interested in that, your best bet with that would be Kydex. It works the best for those. Yeah, things. or maybe some Kydex leather hybrids if you're just really a leather guy. True. Right? Okay, awesome. Um, then one of the other ones that we get a lot, so there's some, I put this out everywhere, and there's a couple of things in different places, and I saw this a lot, what is the current turnaround time from start, from the start of the order, because people have to call you to make that order until people get delivery? Well, it's sort of two-tiered. For custom items, custom being really complicated, time-consuming things, like an elaborate cowboy gun belt. Mm -hmm or things I have to design from the ground up I've never done before, we are pushing about a year out right now mm -hmm. because of just the utter craziness demand of this year. Mm -hmm. Now, for production items, things that are standards that we make all the time, still can be several months. Okay. We are just loaded past our eyeballs. Yeah, so with, and this is a question for me, with what's been happening to everyone around the last year, maybe a year, and, a few months. How's that affected business? Did you shut down at all? Well, Did it go up or down? In the beginning, like everyone else, I was worried we'd be shut down. Mm -hmm. But when all the panic gun buying started this time last year, mm -hmm. our business tripled overnight and hasn't slowed down. I've been okay. working seven day weeks ever since. Right. It's okay. Been crazy. Yeah. And so basically, it's you. I know that it's kind of like a family business, so you have members of the family. Sh mm -hmm. Shout out to Anne. Absolutely. And Anne runs the office and keeps us all straight. Right. <laughs> and um, and then you've got you you've got your sons, but I know you know they're well, my youngest son works part time. He's still right. in high school, and I got two young lads working with me at the shop, putting things together. Right. 
And we put out an awful lot of stuff. Yeah, Dom's still in all. Dom's the, still with us. The leather carving exactly. and stuff like that. So I mean, there's still there's still a staff over there, and you've got a production lineup. Noticed. We are producing a lot <laughs> of our regular gear, but yeah, it, the demand just keeps out running us. Yeah. So let's go to this is a, like this is a question from my main Facebook page, and uh, I think it's Dan Moyer says. Do they use lining leather for the inside of holsters? If so, what's the preferred leather? Deer, pig, goat, or lightweight cow? Thanks. Well, mostly we're using cowhide in two forms for the lining. Either suede, which most people ask for. The suede is softer and easier on a gun's finish. Or a smooth leather lining, smooth like the outside. And it's just personal preference. Some like one, some like another. Okay, what's up with the other things in there, like deer, pig, goat, is that, are those I things really you've worked with? I really don't have a lot of experience using those for linings. Some of them may yeah. not last because they're quite soft. Mm -hmm. Others, I just haven't tried. Okay, there you go. Uh, so along, along the lines of ordering, stomping you, this is a comment, stomping you says, I'm ordering soon. All right. So that's, <laughs> those are coming, still coming in, right? <laughs> Nothing stopped there. Um, and then I think uh, Jeff Waite, I, you know, I don't know whether or not you know him. He says he hasn't seen you in years, and somehow you both uh, found a lot more gray hair. Yes, it's a yeah, the gray funny, coming funny in. thing about that. No, yeah. I, I blame my children. <laughs> Greek, do you know Grecian man or whatever that <laughs> thing? What is it? Oh, what is the stuff that people oh, paint? <laughs> formula. Yeah, Grecian yeah. formula. You know, let it that. go. Yeah, the gray hair is distinguished. Well, I yeah. earned them. Yes, I'm not, um, I'm not coloring mine either, so I'm with you on that one. Okay, so let's go to Instagram. Um, so Cujo74S says, I wonder how hard it is marketing, uh, marketing quality holsters in the day and age of people wearing airsoft gear. So um, I, guess, I guess that's a little bit funny. There have been some people in the news. Yeah, there's been some people in the news wearing airsoft gear. But do you, yeah. Uh, we're not going to deep dive into that at all. No, marketing but, has never been a problem. The, mm -hmm. the gear sells itself. Right. Making enough is always the issue. Yeah, so I think the thing there is that there's some people who are not really um, deep into the gun world. Right. And when they first come in, maybe if you're just getting stuff off of Amazon, sure. you don't realize what you're ordering <laughs> is really airsoft gear. Could be. Um, so that's maybe where that comes from. But I, I will modify that question to Kydex. Um, has Kydex made, you've been doing this for what, 40 years? 45 years now. 45 years. Have, have you seen Kydex? It really, any it doesn't impact? affect us. The, the people who want the Kydex, mm -hmm. either because it fills a tactical need or because it's lower cost, they're not going to pay the leather prices. Mm -hmm. And the people who want fine leather wouldn't be caught dead wearing Kydex. Right. So two completely different audiences. They yeah, don't really completely, cross. Yeah, different worlds no. and different things. Do you ever use, in your life, do you ever use Kydex for any reason? The only thing I've used is on my paddle holsters. Mm -hmm. I've used Kydex to make the paddle, which we then cover on the inside with suede. Okay. Because it's easy to mold with heat. Okay. All right. But you personally, you don't, you don't use Kydex or Not anything like that? Not for a holster that. itself. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people like myself, I mix it up. Right? Sure. Sometimes I've got certain uses for Kydex, but if I'm really looking for something comfortable, I'll go with the leather. I feel yeah. it's a lot more comfortable. Yeah, and then if you get a really nice gun, <laughs> I mean, and you you know, if there's some really nice expensive mm -hmm. um, guns out there, why would you put that in Kydex? It's guaranteed <laughs> to take off the finish. It's not just that, I mean, even the whole idea of it, you know, there's some heart and soul that go into some of these higher-end handguns, right? right? That Why would be like that wearing in? galoshes with a tuxedo. Right. It yeah. doesn't go together. Get classy, get classy. <laughs> Listen, I'm a, I'll, I'll go leather with a Glock, so I know some people, I've been in your shop and someone chastised me for that, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that happens. Um, Oscar3504 says, patiently waiting. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All patience is treasured. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's, let's, go, let's go to another one here. Um, so, Pile Drivers 19 says, Price on a left-handed shoulder holster 
for the eight shot Ruger Redhawks. So that's a very specific. That is quite. Yeah, specific question. Well, the, the basic, say our Monarch holster, which is mm -hmm. our most popular mm -hmm. balanced ammo and gun, they're about 275 for any large auto or revolver. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. So, and that that would be right in that category. And you do left handed, right handed. Left hand, right hand makes no yeah. difference. You know, that brings up a point. I think that a lot of the. Um, a lot of Kydex guys don't do a lot of left hand yeah. stuff. Yeah, because you you know you have to. There are ones who do it for sure, but I know I get that question all the time when oh. it comes to special things like that. So leather is a category where you can do some of these oh, things. Right? All I have to do is flip over the pattern when I'm tracing it out. It, it's simple. Yeah. Well, I think in, in making Kydex, especially now, has become more complicated. So I think the production of that and how they're making it, you know, because you've got to really make machinery right. to stamp out things and things like that. I so can't this, speak to it. I have yeah. no yeah. experience at all in Kydex. Yeah. But, but I think from my experience, and I'm not an expert on Kydex either, maybe right. we'll do some other stuff in the future with someone who is, but from what I've seen, just the production right. of that doesn't lend very well if they don't see the return of course. by specifically making a bunch of left hand. If, if you have to things, make a lot know. of expensive tooling to do something, mm -hmm. you want to move a lot of them. Yeah. Sure. So in a case like that, if you're in that position, I would say go leather. Certainly. Yeah, that's the way to go with it. So, and then we did answer this about turnaround time. I right. um, see one of those there. Trandernell wants to know how you start a new design when a new gun comes out. Now, I was I was harassing you about this today. <laughs> right. it's, um, so Walther has the PDP out. Mm -hmm. How do you think about all this? Um, well, first I'd have to get one of the dummy guns. Mm -hmm. Either polymer or the cast aluminum. Right. I can use either one. But we have to have the, the physical mm -hmm. shape of the, holster, of the gun to make the holster. Mm -hmm. And then the easy way is if it's fairly close to another gun, I can take the pattern I've already got for holster for the other gun mm -hmm. and modify it slightly for whatever's longer or shorter or wider. Wider, yeah, the it's slide. It's so much like easier that. to start from a known design yeah. and do a little modification. If I have to do it from a blank piece of paper from the ground up, it takes longer and there's a bit of trial and error, mm -hmm. you know, cutting and fitting and saying, oh no, that needs to be broadened yeah. or tightened. Yeah. That's going about it the long way. Yeah. So in a case like that, if I had, for example, the Walth the Walther PDP, right. um, I would probably bring it to you and then you take a look at it and exactly. say, hey, let's see what the differences are exactly, here. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And then also with a lot of companies, including Walther, and I had a discussion with them on this. Nowadays, when they're putting out these guns, they want holster options to be available. Well, certainly. Including in leather. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of like a, meant not only to be a duty pistol, but they're designing it to be a duty pistol. And, mm -hmm. and, and I find that a lot of, um, not everyone that's uh, in law enforcement, but a lot of those guys, especially wearing these guns all day right. and all that kind of stuff, do like leather. So, um you know, in those cases when things come out like that, you pr you probably see it. How often? How long does it take before you see those those blanks or dummy guns coming out? It can be up to a couple of months after mm -hmm. a new gun hits the market before mm -hmm. one of the companies that makes the dummies offers one for sale. Yeah. Yeah. There's some I've never found. They just mm -hmm. they weren't popular enough. Yeah. And others seem to approach right away, just pop yeah. right up. Yeah, I think they I think the companies are getting better with that. Okay, so let's see here. I think, I think I've gone through a lot of the questions that I see. Now, you're taking phone calls from folks every day, right? Oh, constantly. What are, what are the ones that you're seeing that you deal with a lot that maybe it would just help with some of your phone calls? <laughs> Obviously, everyone ordering has to talk to you anyway, well, but what do you, what do you see? Well, mm -hmm. we've been seeing, especially this year, mm -hmm. a huge demand for concealed carry holsters a lot of people asking for our shoulder holsters because they're so comfortable to wear. As mm -hmm. You've had one for years, you know mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems a little seasonal. Cooler months, people want shoulder holsters. Come the summer, a lot of inside the waistband holsters. Okay. But this year has been off the charts for everything. Mm -hmm. the, the gun frenzy was quite a gift. 
Okay. Holster makers. Okay. So you uh, do you run into a lot of uh, questions about the uh, like the exotic leathers and stuff like that? Occasionally. Okay. People aren't ordering the very high dollar exotic leathers all the time. Oh, they're not. Okay. It might get a couple a week, mm -hmm. and then it's usually a lot of discussion over the different variations. Mm -hmm. What's tough? What or like durable? Mm -hmm. What's glittery and flashy? Different <laughs> colors. Yeah. Depends on what people are after. Yeah, I mean, it really could be something that someone racks their mind about. A, a lot of people have struggled with their decisions. In their yeah, life. yeah. So definitely take your time and look at because I know you've got a, a a website that gets into detail right. with this before you even call up Sam. <laughs> You've got um, 18 different creatures to choose from. Yeah. So there's lots of choices. Yeah. So that's that's not bad. Okay, I think we have some other stuff that we're going to get into now, but we're going to go back to the shop, right? And we're going to take a look at these things because these are things that you really need to show yeah, it's people. It's easier to demonstrate uh, than explain. Yeah. So let's do that now. One of the frequently asked questions that we get is if a holster, a new holster, is too tight, how do I loosen it up? You'll hear people talk about putting things in plastic bags or greasing them or all of that. Don't really work all that well. When we dry the holsters in the sun after the wet molding, sometimes there's a bit of shrinkage. Just depends on the leather. So the best way of loosening one up is to shim it. It's just a controlled stretching method. Here's a shoulder holster unit for a Glock. And if it's tight, which this one is, as you can see. I take a shim, a spacer. I use some leather because I've got a lot of scrap leather. You can use corrugated cardboard cut from a box. That works really well too. I just sort of cut the outline of the slide and trigger guard. Slip that inside the holster. Push the gun down in on top of it. Let that sit for five minutes, then try it without the shim, and it should move a lot more easily. You don't want to hyper stretch it, but this will break that new tightness in the fibers and let it move, let it actually draw. But the other thing that can happen is sometimes the strap will come up a little short. Now this one is not, this one is fine, but if the strap is short and the snaps aren't quite meeting, then the best way to do that is to take another shim. This is a piece of plastic, again. You can use cardboard, you can use leather, any kind of spacer, and put it under the back of the slide to stretch this out. You can pull the strap over the shim and get it snapped. This is rigid, so it's easy to slide in. And let that sit for a while, and that will stretch out the leather and make it a lot easier to use. Okay. Um, so can I ask you this? What if you have the reverse problem? What if the gun is a little bit loose? Loose is a tougher nut. You can't shrink leather. Mm -hmm. um, you can try with heat, but you'd end up burning it, really, before you get any real shrinkage. If the gun is loose in the holster, you can like run more stitching up tighter to the weapon to shrink the interior volume. Yeah, but that's a much more involved problem. Okay. The biggest thing we run into is tightness, tightness. because of the shrinkage of the leather. Okay, awesome. I just figured people would ask that. That's true. So just to wrap this up, I do want to remind everyone, if you really have questions that we didn't cover, call him. Call us directly. <laughs> yes. Now, Sam's kind of old school, so there's a phone line, and there's this thing that you hear that sounds like, eh, eh, that's a busy tone. You know, <laughs> you, know you have to actually, it's a human being, not a robot. <laughs> One line in. Yeah, so he might be talking to other people, but um, even that happens to me. I, oh, what sure. I do is I just call back. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, Sam's always here. A lot of your questions you can get answered that way. Or maybe we'll try to, for a certain time period, get to some stuff in this video. Truly. Right. Well, what else if folks want to make orders and stuff like that? What info? Well, we'll always appreciate the basic information. What gun have you got? Mm -hmm. Where would you like to wear it? What mm -hmm. type of holster? We'll go over options on finishes. Mm -hmm. There's 
all kinds of ways we can yeah. do them. What's the phone number? It is 904-679-4997. Okay. And I'm here just about every waking hour. Yeah, and if you want to look at the website, the website is... Uh, it's easy, andrewsleather.com. There you go. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks so much to Sam Pleasure for doing all of that. Absolutely, good seeing you guys again. Um, you know, I, if people are in St. Augustine, can they... No? Oh, people are welcome to drop by. We just appreciate a call first we'll call. so we don't yeah. miss you. Yeah, absolutely. So I will see you guys next time around. Make sure you uh, subscribe here to the channel. Uh, smash the thumbs up. Leave your comments and your questions. And definitely ring the bell so you can get notified when we absolutely. post up these videos. Very important nowadays. All right, Sam. See ya. My pleasure, sir. Peace. Make sure to check out HowStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.